We got you up in the hills. I'm gonna show you how to do some prospecting for load gold. This area is known to produce tons of silver and gold, primarily gold. And I'm gonna show you what you should be looking for so you can find gold in these remote areas too. What we have behind us is the Monarch Mill, huge gold producer. And along the way, I'm gonna give you some pointers of what you should look for if you wanna find some gold at these old mill sites. They were doing cyanide up here too. Yep. Those are cyanide, the bottom of cyanide tanks. Oh really? And this is a big old honking dewatering screen. So the way these work is after they get done running a lot of the material through the crushers, primary and secondary, in the older days, they would use stamp mill batteries and they would have amalgamation tables to catch the big chunky stuff before they run it in the cyanide. Because cyanide is no good on the large chunky gold. It only works on the very small, tiny, tiny, like 100 minus mesh gold. So what they would do is they would be running the tails through this and they would dewater it and that way they can get the water out and they could rerun it again. And then all the cake material on the outside, they probably collected it here. You can see the scraper right here. So chances are it's rotating clockwise. It would scrape it off. They would have this mesh here. Then they would pipe that down to the next tank and they would run it again. And they would get every speck of gold. We're gonna go up here and take a look around and I wanna see if there's any evidence of pieces of gold left because they didn't get it all. And I'm gonna show you what to look for. Tell them who you are and what this is all about. My name's Danny. We're here at the Monarch Mill site behind Raw Peak, close to the ghost town of Como, Nevada, looking at this oddball operation. Denny's been up here more times than I can count, and he says there used to be sluice riffles in here. So is that I'm, right? I'm kind of curious if it was from back then or if somebody decided to put them in there back in the day. Oh, okay. Everything, you know? Now, to me, the first thing I think of when I see this is a mechanical classifier, where you have a machine that does this that classifies the material. And he said he saw riffles in it. Maybe that was put in later for them to wash material through it and then try to catch it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull samples here because this is at the front of the milling operation. And then we'll go up and that looks like it used to be an ore bin and they had to have a primary crusher right around here Monday. to get it down to size. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they had a ball mill here too because right here, huh? these foundations look like they're big enough to support that type of equipment. Ball mill sat here, primary crusher sat there. It fed from there to the ball mill. Ball mill fed would feed into these troughs which are mechanical classifiers if it was small enough, it would go down for cyanide because you have to have very small material for cyanide and then a dewatering screen. And if it was too big, the, the classifiers would bring the bigger stuff up and it would run back through the circuit again. I'm going to pull out what I can, show you what I know. Hey, what am I going to say? So come on, let's go. Look for areas that's right down from the ore bin or the primary crushers, or if they have a ball mill, open them up, scoop them out, clean them out. If there's any three mil gold, it's still in there. But make sure you check land status first, okay? You might be digging up somebody else's gold. I dug out a bunch of material up there in what looks like a mechanical classifier. So hopefully there's a little bit of material left there. I'm not gonna dig in the cyanide tanks. I'm not gonna waste my time, but we're gonna see what's in this. I got a whole five gallon bucket so we can at least see what we got. Oh, I got a little piece of gold. Oh yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through the entire bucket and then I'm gonna show you what I got. Hopefully you can see it on this GoPro. If not, I'll take a snapshot and throw it up later. Nasty. Oh yeah, right there, right there. That's what I hate about these GoPros. It's so hard to see anything. Don't worry, we're working on getting a magnifier so you can definitely see it. Right, I wanted to show you this real quick. I know it doesn't look like much, but this used to be the post office right here. Now, to give you a clue to where I'm at, we're in the little town of Como. That's all I'm gonna tell you. You're gonna have to look it up and do the history yourself. But we're gonna be poking around here, looking around. I'm gonna give you all the geology that I know about this area and the sulfides and the gold and the free mill. And it's hard to believe that this used to be the post office for the town. Now, some of the locals here said they remember when the walls were all squared off here. And Rosian has actually brought all this down Look at this. They're using mud for cement. See that? That's their cement is mud and it's holding these together these walls And then of course in the front they're using cement this type of cement white cement 
But over time, of course, over a hundred years, it's gonna come apart. Now there's not much left of the town and there was a fire that came through here and obviously you can see where it's wiped everything out. But I still have tons and tons of mine dumps out here and I got high grade, low grade piles everywhere. And of course, trenching from modern mining companies. Now there is patent land out here, but there's also open BLM. So we're gonna grab some samples. I'm gonna tell you what I know about the geology here and then we're gonna see if we can find some gold. But I'm not gonna do anything until you smash that like button. Smash it! <laughs> You can see the sulfides in there yeah. and the, where they're starting to eat away at the host rock or the gang material uh -huh. as the water's mixing with it, creating sulfuric acid. That's what that whole pile is right above where yeah. you're at, Jenny. These are Wait, all sulfides. Yeah, it might be slag. One way to find out. Oh, you are correct. Like it's slag. <laughs> Who said slag? I do. Right. You're right. right. I got an A. <laughs> Yay. So they got copper ore out here. You can see the silicates here and a few carbonates. This should be a no-brainer what's behind me. This is the foundations to a stamp mill. Now stamp mills are always a good sign because a lot of times you'd use stamp mills for free mill. And of course you'd use amalgamation. You'd have your copper plates on the other end of, of the stamp batteries. So as the ore comes out and it's crushed, runs across those copper plates that have a whole bunch of mercury on them. And of course the gold will stick to it. And then later you run it through a shaker table and then cyanide. But we have stamp mill here, mine dump there. And I have a whole bunch of tailings. Cause remember mills make tailings, mines make mine dumps. So we're gonna look around to see if there's any piles of high grade just hanging around that never made it through. I'm looking at a lot of the basement rock here and I've got a lot of andesite. Now what's interesting is this andesite has disseminated sulfides in it. What does that mean? Well, it tells me if I have any hydrothermal activity, it's gonna leach those out of the country rock and redeposit them in any of the fractures, fissures, or faults. What does that look like right there to you, huh? Fine grain, black. It looks like the silica content is very low, maybe 20%. That's a no brainer right there. That is what? Basalt. Now I know there's not gold in basalt, not most of the time, but this is a good indicator if there was basaltic dikes in the area. And I'll go over that just like up at Liberty. All right, let's get on up the hill. See if we can find some gold. Mine dumps that have sulfides in them, when they've been weathered, they create a hard surface on the outside and they're extremely slippery and they're extremely hard to walk on because you can't get a good footing. So keep that in mind if you're walking on mine dumps that have a lot of sulfides in them. <laughs> not funny man i got a condition <laughs> it's not funny a lot of this gang material which is the quartz the silica it's got tons and tons of sulfides it's all disseminated in there and when you break it open you can smell it it's a no-brainer but gold can be associated with sulfides the problem is is you have to concentrate and roast them to find out we're looking for free mill we're not interested in sulfides and stamp mills are good for free mill gold and you can see where a lot of the sulfides are weathered that's why you have all this iron staining here and because it is oxidized there could be a chance of free mill gold being in this and it explains why there's a shaft on the other side of this tree see this see where i've got this sinkhole right here that tells me i'm standing on something doesn't it now i could probably dig that out but the problem is is i've got fractures here see the fracture ring it goes all the way up here comes down here by my feet and up around so right about here if i were to put money on it is a shaft and i can see the beautiful vein material that they were chasing down let's do a rock test shall we <laughs> you were waiting for that to open up, weren't you? I was too. I see a lot of guys put their plaster gold in glass vials. That's a big no-no, okay? Put it in plastic. Use an old snuffer bottle and plug the top. Why? Look at that. Somebody had a little vial. That looks like a one ounce vial. And it probably had some little pieces of gold in it and they dropped it and it shattered. So that's why you never use glass vials to put your plaster gold in. You got anything worth anything? Oh, that looks chunky monkey right there. The blacks and reds. It looks like it's got a lot of silver in there. I got some oxides right there of iron. That'd actually be worth crushing. I'm gonna have Chris, Spencer, Denny. He's part of the Sutro Tunnel. He's part of the Sutro Tunnel and he's part of the Sutro Tunnel. I'm gonna leave links down below so you can get a hold of these guys personally. They can take you out in the field if you ask them nicely. And I'll leave a donation bar below so that you can help them get their next series of sets in so they can drive it all the way back to the, I guess to the dam, right? 1500 feet. Yeah, we'll get to the dam. Yeah. With so your help. Exactly, because we can't do it without you guys. You know that. So, so you know what I'm gonna say, right? So yeah. come on, let's, let's go! go! These are called hand stacks. Oh, and they're all over. I got one there. Look at, I got hand stacking here. I got hand stacking there. Nice, I got some more hand stacks here. What that tells me is that they went to a lot of work 
to move all the overburden out of this wash and stack it up onto the sides here of the benches. And the only time you see that is when they're finding gold down on the bedrock. And that's why it's so important that you know how to identify hand stacking, okay? Because it's a good indicator that you're standing on top of some placer gold. Now, yes, I know they got a lot of it, but over a hundred years, that gold is washed down time and time again every time the wet season comes. So the gold can be replenished. So what you need to do is make sure you got your crevicing tools, your vac packs, and I'd even bring a metal detector just to check for the larger pieces. So we're gonna pull samples. Oh, <laughs> this got me really excited seeing this. All right, so I got all the material here. All right, that's enough. Let's see what we got. Oh, I got a lot of black sand, you see that? Always nice to get black sand in there. Oh, oh, oh. Look, look, look. Got a piece of gold right there, you see it? Oh, a nice wiry piece of gold. Oh, oh yeah, look, 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 look. Nice. Hold on, let me tap that up. Nice. There's a wiry piece. There's a whole bunch of fines. There's some big chunky flakes in there all across there. So you know what that means, right? That's right. I'm gonna be going back there real soon like, and I'm gonna be filing a claim. That's what I want you to do is when you get out to areas like that, evidence of other placer working, I want you to get out there and I want you to start sampling, okay? But check your land status first. It's very important. Always note what you find. Make sure you log it down and you keep track because I've seen so many people and myself included, we'll find gold, it'll come from a bucket. We can't remember where it came from and we just basically lost our mother load. That is promising for a little tiny bucket. I'm impressed. Don't forget, we're giving away bars of silver. I'm talking huge bars of silver. They look something like this. We're giving away 25 ounce, 10 ounce, five ounce, one ounce. We're just giving away all kinds of silver bars. And if that wasn't enough, we're giving away bags of pay dirt and monster gold nuggets. Is this that? is the stuff dreams are made of. And if you hurry and sign up, we're also giving away a gold monster 1000. For your chance to win this stuff, just look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks like that. Click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you instantly become eligible to win this stuff. And if you wanna see videos on how we mine this out of our drift mine, just click on that video right there, and we'll see you in the gold fields.